Okay, I'll call this uh, meeting to order. This is the Ad Hoc Community Center Committee. It is uh, Thursday, I'm sorry, it says Thursday, Monday. Oh, sorry, I'm, sure <laughs> I'm reading it and I'm not yeah, thinking oh, it like, wait a minute. Monday, November 20th, it is uh, 7.04 p.m. Um, just go around the table here really quick. Let's start with Todd. Uh, Todd Sutter, Director of Community Services. Uh, Liz Stanford, uh, resident committee member. Patrick O'Reilly, chairman, committee member. Gwen Simons, committee member. Uh, Bill Donovan, president of the Scarrow Public Library. Um, we don't have any other committee members online here today. Um, we can't, we don't have a quorum, so we can't vote on the approval of the minutes. We'll have to table that to the next meeting. Um, item four is public comment. Any members of the public to speak? Uh, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Um, I'm Sue Hamill, and um, I'm first going to have a couple of meetings. Would we move public comment to the end of the meeting? That way, if I, the public can address items that may have come up with the meeting. Secondly, um, can we get an email address on the website, which I talked to you? Yeah, um, and I asked to see what they contact could. us. Like what the school building has, or contact. I put the request in. And then also getting these slides open for the presentations. And I did get the ones from last meeting. Yep. Um, and when, um, so the challenge is going to be with their schedule going every other week, and we can talk as we get further meeting. Um, they got uh, they got them to me late Friday night, and they got posted today. So they're on the they're on the, the calendar invite. So it yeah. should be the Zoom link. The slide deck just the problem is nobody works on the weekends to be able to get it posted so it's going to be a first thing monday morning probably if if it's um a monday meeting yeah. so but that is so you can pull those up on the website and then um i'm concerned that this uh no matter how much people have said they want a community center they want a board that um they that when this comes up on the ballot it will get voted down. And because they're just not willing to pay for it. And I hope that we could start looking at some other ways to kind of combine it. I mean, the school is back up. Include a school, a pool in the school, or um, do it as a phased in project where you build maybe the gym first with the long-term plan is that you will add food or you'll add whatever that um there may be a better chance to get it passed um uh, i just i uh have we looked at bringing a y back and getting them even if the town bought the land, provided it as a donation for a why. I I feel like that's going to be our best. Something like the why coming to town will be our best way to actually get this community center that we all want. That we're, I know that um, Patrick had said we are working in a vacuum here, but we are really not working in vacuum. I mean, we're part of a bigger town that has other needs and other priorities. And I just feel like we need to plan this in a way that that is going to generate public support. And I, I know that you have a, a day coming up in December where you will go into the schools and talk to kids, and everybody will be excited about it. But when the vote, you know, at, at whatever time that this project comes up for vote and it's $40 million and it's going to have a big budget impact, I think it's going to be a difficult um, thing for the town to accept. So there we go. Okay, thank you. Um, the you'd ask the clerk to see what the what the standard agenda is. I, I typically have seen it always at the front of the meeting, but maybe if I have some, maybe you have some flexibility. I just don't know if the town has a standard format for that. But do I know, I, do I we know need a motion to 
to move that to the end I of the just leave it up to the clerk the town clerk and have them whatever the standard format is that the town uses we can we can do it that way okay. i think the thought was that some people would want to come to the beginning of the meeting and say what they wanted to say yeah. and then leave and watch the meeting later or whatever so i'm not sure i'm just whatever the town clerk thinks is a standard format that they want to use well if we can have any discussion about that i think it might be helpful because i would like to after we hear all of the discussion if the people in who are here from the public want to comment on what we just heard in the meeting that might that might actually be helpful i would i would be in favor of that yeah um and the my comment at the last meeting was about the committee's charge being in a vacuum, we don't have the flexibility to decide what our to change our charge or what that should be. So I don't want that to be mischaracterized. Obviously, the project itself is not being taken under consideration by the town council and the voters in a vacuum. It's in totality of all the other projects and priorities and items that they have on their plate. So um, that hopefully didn't uh, that wasn't misunderstood. Okay, moving on. This is not the first person I've heard express the point of view that uh, trying to work with the school system in whatever resolution they decide to pursue uh, is a way to get two projects that are both deserving to be better received by the community. Uh, and it might benefit us to have that kind of contact with the school department, superintendent of schools, uh, chair of the school committee, as to what is their plan and can there be a coordination? Because we're going to get to site selection at some point, obviously, and so is the school. They did with a larger school, and now they're going to have to have a plan B, which would possibly involve the same site, maybe a different site, but it might help us in our process going forward to coordinate ourselves with the school. Uh, um, because they're, I represent the library and I think the library, the school and the community center are all very deserving projects, will benefit the community tremendously all three, uh, but we need to find a way to coordinate it, to find it acceptable to the residents of the community. So that that just, Susan's comment brought to mind something I'd heard from others that resonated. And to the extent that it saves money to do that, that's what the taxpayers want, I think. Yeah, I serve on the school build committee and so that next meeting is the 28th, so we'll get a little more clarity on the direction. I know some of the school officials are, I, they have meetings without that build committee on certain topics, but our first official meeting is until the 28th, six o'clock in chambers is the first. What's the date? Tuesday, the 28th, 6 p.m. next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next week, yes, 28th. And yeah, I'm, I mean, Portland did this very thing. Their community centers, are integrated with their elementary schools. Uh, and so, and I don't think the school board has much choice but to pursue a fourth elementary school. It pushes the timeline out considerably, but that you can't go back with the same plan that was seriously defeated. The library feels the same way. We cannot go back with the same plan or a similar one or slightly modified. Uh, you've got to realize you have that shot. You shoot at the king, you miss him. That's your that's your chance. You now you have to have another plan. Yeah. Again, I know, and these guys probably know better than I, but I think they're talk there's a million things being talked about right now. What direction council and they go as far as. A survey looking forward what are the reasons i think we could all speculate pretty soundly why things were were not passed but nobody can say for sure and so i think that once the school board decides which path they're going to go um i think there's a lot of opportunities for having conversation um so i think until we're guided to to change direction and so we'll talk about our schedule too because we're going to take a little bit of a pause here so, well, if if you're attending those meetings 
on behalf of the uh, community services department yeah. uh, for the school, I would welcome you expressing the view that we'd be very interested to know what we can do to support them. They support us right. in our efforts. Gotcha. We'll do. Yeah. Okay. Util, you guys are on. Great. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Nice to be here with you tonight. Um, Keith, if you want to pull up the show, there you go. Perfect. Thanks. Um, I'm just going to frame the issues a little bit for us tonight. Um, I think we're in a good position relative to our first task, which was to explore the types of uses and activities uh, that translate into spaces in a new community center. Um, so tonight we're going to review just those types of spaces that we've heard from the committee and also from many years of past um, work that the town has done um, that there would be a preference for in the community center. Um, we're gonna show you that some things are kind of fixed. They're not really negotiable. You need to have an entry lobby. You need to have bathrooms. You need to have service space, et cetera. And then there's some things that are flexible, um, that there are choices in terms of the size um, of these programs. And we'll show you what some of those are. Um, and like I said, I think we're in a really good position going into our community feedback sessions on December 7th, where we'll get a lot of great information, great new information from different stakeholders who haven't had a chance to participate in these meetings. Um, and our goal is to kind of integrate everything that we've talked about in these committee meetings, all of the information that we're going to get on December 7th, and come to a recap uh, on the program um, in the coming weeks. Um, so just tonight, uh, we really want to, um, you know, review some of these building spaces. Um, and we know that there are some gaps to fill in um, in the coming weeks as well. And those are particularly around capital costs. So how much of a, what's the construction cost of this, but also what the operational cost and potential revenue stream is. So we'll be working with our consultants in the coming weeks to fill in some of those gaps as well. Tonight, we really want to focus in on building spaces and where some of those options are. So I'm going to stop talking. I'll hand it over to Keith. Great. Now, I, I think there might be a business on the agenda to set some of the meetings going forward. But uh, right now, the, the one we have planned is uh, the community activity charrette on the 7th, which uh, some people from the committee, I think, and also uh, Todd staff will be participating us uh, uh, with us in. Uh, and then we'll have a, a kind of Im impromptu recap session uh, happening uh, at 7 p.m. after those meetings just to kind of um, talk about the tenor of the meetings and how, what we thought was effective and, and and not, but really just kind of briefly uh, touch base about it. And then the first meeting in January, whatever date that gets set, you know, we'll, we'll do a little more um, comprehensive unpacking of that process and what, what we learned uh, and how we uh, uh, view that in, in light of the programming work that's been happening and how we see the activities that uh, people, uh, community members have expressed an interest in fitting in with the overall program of spaces that we've been uh, reviewing all together. Yeah, I have a question um, about what we're doing on the 7th. Um, can you explain a little more on like who's who's doing what? Are, are, are the committee members going to those events? Can we go to those events? Is it the consultants who are managing that? So the consultants are managing the events. They're going to be there to lead questions, collect data. Um, in the school system, my school, we go to the middle school and high school, it's got the schedule here. Our staff will attend them just because we're familiar faces in most of those systems. But, um, and then at the two to three event, 3.30 events, um, again, that's open to the public, but we have an event going on at the hub. So we've got a certain demographic there. Um, and then committee members are, are more than welcome to join at any of these events. If you want, if you would like to attend the school, we just need to know so okay. we can meet you and get you in. Um, and then we have the, the one at the hub, obviously. And again, that should be a bigger number of people. And again, it's about mingling and gathering information. Um, and really, this is just literally, not literally is not the word. This is designed for people to be able to tell what they'd like to see in a building. Again, through all the surveys, they've said what kind of spaces, you know. Um, and but until you design what needs to happen in a space, you don't know what it really should look like or how big or what it's partnered with. Um, and, and like sidewise or complementary spaces. Okay. Uh, 
So that's really, this is kind of a, an opportunity for the public to say what they'd like to see. Because when you say pool, some people say, oh, I'm a lap swimmer. So that's a, that's a head down. Some people say, I really want swim lessons for my child. So those are different. They can all happen in the same pool, but like we learned last time, different services provide different needs and you know it improves level of service. So that's the same thing with a gymnasium. If we've got a high, high push for something that called for a different service than a wood floor, then you design those features around to meet the activities that are people looking for. So this is really a chance for people to say what they want to see happen in there. Um, and then that'll help them just, you know, when they get to the point of saying, okay, here's here's where footage to meet an activity, you can do it in this. You can't do that in this, so you have to choose. Okay, thanks. Yeah, sure. yeah. and so we're gonna be in touch with Todd, you know, about the nitty gritty, um, you know, who, who's gonna go where at what times, um, you know, I think these are all gonna be similar flavor of event. Um, uh, but, you know, I think who we're talking to will shape a little bit how we approach it. Um, you know, we, we haven't we haven't really uh, had our own uh, kind of internal discussion about, you know, how we're going to tackle each one. But you know, a lot of times it's it's about, um, you know, having some precedent images or a, a events to kind of spur the discussion and then, you know, stickers or or, uh, or icons or emojis that can help uh, identify what are what are ideas that have traction. And, uh, you know, it, it plays to people who may want to get engaged, but don't necessarily want to come and talk to someone at a table. Um, so there's a lot of approaches. And I think where we need to, uh, you know, uh, on the back end, uh, start to talk about how we spur that discussion and and get into the, ac the actual details and and uh, of the day itself. So that's coming up. I think, uh, Todd, maybe uh, you and I uh, can t find a couple of times where we can uh, meet with you and, and the, the folks from your department who you expect would be uh, uh, helping us to run these events. And thanks a lot. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <That's a lesson. laughs> All right, back where we, where we uh, left off. So this somewhat intimidating uh, spreadsheet, uh, which hopefully you have people have, have seen or downloaded, it's available to download and and worth looking at. Uh, you know, we're we're uh, trying to get ahead of things. I know there's a lot of information. These meetings have run long. Uh, it's it's difficult to to process them. So we're doing our best to. Um, uh, to to get this in your hands ahead of time, and that's worth the discussion maybe at the end when we talk about the cadence of meetings going forward. Um, we have some ideas on how we could make sure that the uh, there's enough time for processing and feedback um, going forward because we realize that that we might be moving a little fast um, for uh, perhaps the project timeline, but also just um, processing the information. Um, if if this were people's uh, full-time job it'd be a different story but uh, I understand that people are you know coming in uh, in the evenings and there's limited time that that everyone has so it's 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 difficult um here here is uh, given our discussions about the activities and the program as we've been discussing here is uh as we've been starting to shape and give numbers and spaces to a lot of those uh, spaces that we've discussed uh ones that we've pared down or jettisoned other ones that we've uh, built up or added, provided like more nuance and information to. Um, it's it's shaping up to around a, you know, we give a, a gross building square foot range at the bottom because as, as Brett was mentioning, certain certain spaces are required, others uh, have some uh, flexibility and then some, you know, may, may not be uh, re required at all or or as if we're looking at a, at a phased project, those we could help identify those uh, portions that, you know, could could live in uh, essential phase or additional phase, you know, which is, you know, not atypical for for a project like this. Um, uh, just to go through each segment, we we see that there's you know kind of six buckets of of program within the within the building. We've obviously got like an entry uh, lobby with some of the the uh, the programs that you would encounter when you first enter. Some of these are are, are more or less fixed and part of really that membership approach, um, membership and community uh, approach greeters. Um, workstation for membership inquiries, et cetera, some back of house um, uses. And then the sports and fitness, um, we kind of divide it into aquatics and sports and fitness. Um, just uh, we'll, they kind of have two buckets, but we'll share a certain amount of the support spaces, uh, which we have those as well, locker rooms, uh, family uh, changing rooms, uh, single and, and multi-user water closets, et cetera. 
Uh, community spaces like the multi-purpose rooms, uh, meeting rooms, the catering kitchen, the game room, child watch, uh, and then a uh, portion for the Scarborough community services. There was a discussion about uh, the efficiencies of having uh, community services end up in the building. Uh, and so looking at uh, the program that Todd had shared with us, uh, trying to identify the, the types of spaces and the sizes um, that, that you, you would see in there. So the you know, subtotal is uh, the number of spaces multiplied by the unit uh, square foot and then a grossing factor and those change a little bit depending on the the type of space so you know the grossing factor would be a little different for aquatics and gym um versus like the uh, the community services which has a lot of smaller cellular rooms and you you need to add uh, more grossing factor to make you know add, add corridors etc and and some back of house spaces etc um just to go through these uh one by one and and offer a some kind of notes about it. Uh, the lobby, certainly the the sign where we put in a number there for what seems like there's a there's an expression for having a, a public space that's that's engaged and that could maybe be programmed, uh, maybe shares some space with the cafe uh, if if there's a cafe in, in in the project. So we're holding a thousand square feet for that right now. Again, that's that's flexible and that also is a little contingent on on site certainly. Um, if if there's room for it, this is uh this seems like a good size, but also could be a place where there could be some economizing, um, and then something that uh, we discussed with uh with with Todd was utilizing the uh, workstations where they are at reception and uh, membership inquiries as also the kind of front um uh the the reception for community services and and. That was done to build some efficiency into it. Obviously, that makes uh, you're kind of staking your, your flag in the ground about how you organize the building a little bit. And so I think depending on how uh, layouts uh, go and and the site factors, uh, that, that may be achievable. It might be something we want to revisit. Uh, Can I ask a quick these... question about that? Yeah. Sure. I, I would assume most of your like community services, soccer registration, and like all that type of stuff is pretty much online. People don't trudge into the office and fill out forms right. and stuff anymore. Do they? Unless people want to pay cash or check, they come in. You know, we do everything, most of the registration online. Uh, most of the senior program, though, is face-to-face -face presently until more people get comfortable with it. Um, so it would be a lot of day passes, membership sales, yes, whatever. Yeah, and, and the reason why I mentioned this when he was asking about our staffing was that's the way my old, my previous job was, and and it was just efficient because, again, people collecting passes or checking in memberships is not all the time. Somebody's got to so, be there anyway. No, it, it just yeah. was a better scope of work to keep somebody busy. And sometimes they're just, the, you know, they would, hey, I'm here to do software registration. You could do it right here. But if there's questions, they just dialed the program, and he or she came around the corner and answered the question. So it was just a way to be efficient and not have extra staff, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in a building or yeah. in a department. So it was a way to minimize and maximize efficiency, but not not overdue having to bring all these new positions on. So, okay. Can I ask a general, just a general question? I know we're going over a lot of this. We've gone over the last two meetings. I've yeah. been to three meetings now. We've yeah. gone over this same content, seems like three times, but we've never had any time to discuss it. When are we gonna discuss it and, and decide where to cut and what? Well, and these guys can chime in, but so, what they've been doing each meeting they've been adding a little more so they came and got feedback and this time they add square footage for you to talk about once they grab the activities then they'll be able to match those into the square footage to say it, it meets but they haven't given because they don't haven't gotten that far yet in the process you don't know what you cut until one what it costs to build the space because then there's revenue concession you know you don't do this well then you can't collect this revenue you know and like um, darren had said the last meeting or two meetings ago, if done right, the operational of this building could be 80% self-sufficient. But that's why we're not even to that. We've got a long way to go before you, you, well, I would be comfortable myself making cuts if asked because you don't know the cause and effect. Hey, Lord, right. you don't know the cause and effect of that yet. So I think we're a few meetings and the way this schedule looks, what he just showed was, you know, due to Tourette on the 7th and then that meeting in January, be able to kind of recap everything that they learned. And then once you set the remainder of your schedule, whatever timeline it is, you're down the road. And they may have a kind of, how many meetings out or months out do you start talking about cutting or shaping or, you know, I don't have that answer in their schedule. 
But there's going to be plenty of opportunities. There is, I mean, we're nowhere yeah, near well, our, our timeline was pretty tight on when we had to make recommendations back, I think. Yeah, that's been extended, and I think it's going to get fresh for that. Okay. Yeah, I think. And, but this is just, we're being educated now. Yes. We're learning yeah. now. Right. <clears throat> because we're not being given the opportunity to have a discussion about it now. Right. Well, and that's that. Uh, what would help me is if when you're making your presentation, Keith, can you point out what's different today than what we've heard the last two meetings? Uh, I can't tell if we're going over the same thing three times or if we're or if you're telling us something different, because I haven't compared all of your slides for each meeting, but that would be helpful. Sure. Yeah, I could I could try to uh, I could try to do that. Sure. Um, um, but so, I just want to chime in too before we thanks. get back on track, which <laughs> is, um, I it it I think it might feel repetitive, but like Todd said, we've been refining, and so part of it is to have the there's only a certain universe of things that are going to go inside the community center, and we want to make sure that we're talking through those each time we're getting feedback from all of the committee members and we're refining it. I think this is a moment where. We've taken all of that discussion and translated it into square footage so that we can start to imagine what a potential building size is. And like Keith said, it's a range. And what you're going to see on the following slides is there are some things that are totally fixed. We don't need to talk about those again, but there are some things where there are options. And so we're about to go through in the next few slides what some of those options are, a kind of small, medium, and large uh, and that's going to be very helpful. If if there are some things that are too small and we take it off the table, that's great. And if we can decide that tonight, perfect. Or if there are some things that feel too large, that'd be also great to take some of those things off the table just so that we start to continue to filter down to what the right program is for this building. No, not, not to belabor my comments more, but um, Brett, can, is it possible to... Um, just based on some of the comments we've heard tonight and in the past um, to talk about what are the core things that need to be built now and are there components of this that can be added on later? I'm looking at the all of these multi-purpose rooms. Um, I think just bit, I reviewed the um, the survey from 2020 today and you know that though all of those meeting rooms I didn't see really anywhere in that survey as being a need I know there was some feedback from the library um, that maybe you know those meeting rooms that they wanted would be absorbed in this but but at some point we, when we're making um, decisions on priorities um, can any of this or do we need to be thinking about this now like what is a priority to be built first versus the things that can be added on. Is is that something that you guys are gonna um, talk about as well? That's something that we'll have some options for in the next few slides. And that's okay. absolutely something that we'll want feedback from this committee on as well. What are the things that need to be in a new community center on day one? And what are the things that could happen a number of years down the road? Also recognizing that capital projects don't happen every five years. They happen over a longer time frame, right? So we want to understand what can what's the absolute have to have now versus what can be 10, 15, 20 years in the future. Okay. Is thanks. that what you meant when you said later on? Yeah. Yeah. Do, like a, like a separate like an added so, oh, something okay. added I was, on. I was later. Like yeah. What do we definitely want to have in the building? And then if we have the capacity to add more into the project in this timeline. Oh, this no, I was project. talking about like if it like, like well, future, just yeah. assuming like that we want to work with a limited budget, something that we know will have more likelihood of passing. Uh, I mean, I think that's something we need to consider. Well, like, but, I, but I think you're right. But again, I just so two things. One is regarding that these spaces, the, again, gathering here, the thing the takeaway with the square footage is that when we go on our tours, most people can't rationalize what square footage is like. You couldn't tell me what the square footage of this room is unless we looked on a tape measure or unless you're an engineer, you know what I mean? You couldn't change, council chambers is like 1600 square feet combined, but unless you know that, you wouldn't know that. And so part of this is looking at some of these spaces and that's why they've added the square footage. So we go to our tour and you walk in the lobby and I say, or the building manager says, this lobby is 500 square feet. You're gonna go, oh my goodness. 
this is too big, too small, whatever your reaction is to be able to kind of figure mm -hmm. out where yeah. things are. The piece that I caution us on is that, you know, yes, this seems repetitive, but as we go down the road and then you finally make some choices around what the building looks like, I just keep going back to, we have to see, yes, what the building's going to cost to be built, but what the what the consequences on the revenue side of things? Because you could build a small building that has a bigger operational cost than if you big a build a building that can make money. And so that's where it's like you know it's like the cafe. Mm -hmm. You know that's up there only as a placeholder because that is a potential revenue bearer and brings foot traffic into a building. So it's a sales thing. That may be the first thing you say. We don't even want to talk about that. So these aren't fixed items. These are items that have been kind of brought up, but that potentially have some revenue projections too. So that's kind of where we need to okay. keep our mind. things to consider list is kind of how I view yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. Dial down based again, getting the activities. You know, if so, if we go to a charrette and someone said, I really want a place to hold birthday parties. Well, that's our room. That's all that cool. Or well, we can do both. But you know what I mean? So some yeah. of these, you have to have space to do the activities that people want. And that's that kind of next phase. So this is just recapping kind of what we've learned through the surveys and then on and off discussions in the seven or eight meetings that we've had so far. Yeah. And I would presume at some point in time, we may get down to the, you know, that line that you're talking about, where mm -hmm. we're, you know, red lining and black lining mm -hmm. things. And they may say, if you, well, if you're taking this out, what you could do is add this at a lower cost, which is going to be revenue neutral or maybe even revenue positive, something like that. So we'll get that kind of feedback. Or you may look at yeah. the bill number and go, no way. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you get everything you want, you may go, no way, and then have to start whittling it down to something that's manageable or even could be palatable. Yeah. But I think it's important information for this committee to have a broader, wider discussion about the total possibilities so that mm -hmm. the town council or a future committee, whenever it gets to the point where they do want to actually get into a referendum, they can look at it and say, all right, the committee looked at all these things and give them the tools to be able to move those pieces in and out and have those different cost and revenue centers assigned to the different pieces of the building, the different components of the program. So it'll be great to bring that with us, that sheet with us yeah, on our I tour. Can, I can make, I can make, Square I page. didn't make it because it was like 30 pages, but I can make, oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, I can make copies for the tour for sure. When we go on our field trip, yeah. just so we walk in the lobby and be like, how big yeah. is this lobby? Yeah. And then, and I'll try home. to do some homework. I, I, I've looked at these sites before, so I, yeah. if I dig through my own stuff, I might have all the square footage too. So you can say, okay, and when they get to it, they talk about a single basketball court or a double court, you can look at it and be like, wow, because the days we're going, the good thing is, sorry, Keith, I don't mean to belabor this. Um, the good thing about we're going, Saturdays between 8 and 11 is probably the busiest most of those community centers are any time during the week. Mm -hmm. Winter basketball, swim lessons, senior activities. So these these buildings will feel crowded and active so you'll get to see them that'll be good function yeah and that's why we picked a saturday early morning because yeah that's the busiest time in any center is saturday morning. Mm -hmm. so, okay excellent thank you keith sure you know two things just to add on to that you know we're we're trying to uh complete the our first task uh ending up with a with a building program or an or you know a small medium large options for that and so you know i think that the next step getting uh, i think that discussion will we come back in the new year with the feedback from the community members and then after having gone on the tours and this presentation tonight tonight um with like some time to digest it seems like that's like really going to be an important meeting in terms of trying to settle, you know, what the, what the program is. Cause like that, that's then the document um, that we can take going forward when we start looking at evaluating uh, uh, sites or evaluating the kind of performance uh, metrics of it. Um, so uh, the, I think, you know, try to solidify this or at least uh, maybe a couple versions of this. Um, so we understand if it's like a, a, a one and two phase or all, all at the same time, you know, trying to try to put those into, into buckets. So that might actually be a way to structure this the discussion in, in in January when we come back together. Um, uh, so again, we'll we'll look at some gym sizes in a moment. So some things that uh, that you know are, are not fixed is you know the the number of uh, of of gym uh surfaces we'll, we'll look at that in a moment so sizes and i think that'll be great to when you walk around and and or in just in your in your normal life looking at uh if you happen to be at an, another gym you'll get a sense of of those sizes um and we could talk about uh the flexibility of of that program um you know in a moment 
and then uh, also important to understand is the different sizes and the and the menu for the for the pools and you know today we we brought some images that that show these all at the same scale and what we're talking about and again this is a little bit of a of a menu of of how uh we would like to uh, approach uh, programming the aquatics. I will say that the aquatics are probably a, you know, that's a, a, in all the surveys, this is a pretty important piece of the program. It's also some of the most infrastructure intense and also the least um, amenable to uh, any kind of phasing. You know, it's it's got so much integrated infrastructure and, and pool pumps, et cetera, that kind of do double duty if there's a pool size. So it just, it seems like that's one piece where uh, it the whole building might hang around, uh, at least if this is the first first phase, you know, that, that aquatics uh, infrastructure. Um, and then we can look at some uh, options for spectator seating, which which come along with uh, with with those spaces. And again, this is it's a little bit of a there's there's flexibility on whether or not that's at the pool deck or or remote or whether it's something that's fixed and and the size of that. Uh, Keith, I have a question on the pool uh, aquatics area. You call it a rinse off zone, rinse showers. Is that I mean, are those full? bathrooms where people can shower and change or is that something different i think it's for um for competitors rinsing off before they get into the pool it's on the pool deck uh it's not it's not okay. inside the locker room so get the contaminants off your body okay so yeah just before you get into the pool shower but then you jam up you you have to put more showers in your locker room so a lot of places will put these rinse showers because it's mandatory to get there and rinse off and it's it's also a lot warmer using a pool deck than it is trudging down the hall from the locker room. So, <laughs> great. Um, we can look at the multi. Uh, purpose room sizes and some meeting rooms and huddle rooms uh so we could talk about you know what what seems like the right size and and number for those spaces um and uh and then also a first stab at uh, at the at the game room size with some idea about how uh, how it could be um you know roughly roughly furnished at least to see the relative size of those spaces um and then the support spaces we're not we're not Really showing a lot of these tonight. Actually, any of these, um, you know, the locker rooms will uh, we're kind of carrying a square foot number. This is kind of driven more by the program and the size that we're uh, the the size of the pool and, and the athletics. So we're we're carrying what we think is a a, a appropriate uh, a square foot number for for those locker room areas. And then also one th one thing that's worth noting is we are also carrying uh, an additional multi-user user WCs uh, that would serve more the uh, community events, uh, multi-purpose room and meeting room, and 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 potentially, you know, the gym if there's an event. Uh, versus having that uh, the the locker locker rooms serve as gang bathrooms for uh, for the community rooms. So that's one one place where it's it's uh, a Nicer user experience, but maybe uh, redundant. But again, a lot of this needs to be vetted out with um, with the plumbing code and the number of uh, of fixtures that are required given the program of the of the building. So they they kind of have to come up together at the same time. And then we we are assuming for the moment, and then obviously worth discussing that you know community services are is located within the building and. And Todd has mentioned how uh, there's an efficiency in, in having that in there, and also because it's a, uh, a they're paying to lease space in in the uh, in the hub, um, but it obviously comes with a first cost of of building those spaces out within uh, within the community center, um, and it would be worth uh, Todd going back and looking at the you know. Check, checking our numbers to make sure that the size and, and number seems appropriate given the program that we've previously got from him and his team. So look at the gymnasium and the walking track. Um, you know, it, it it ranges. We've been assuming, uh, and the number that's in the program is a is is two courts with cross courts that are basically half size courts. Um, but you know, obviously, one court or four courts are are an option, and it depends. You know, the the Gymnasium is a, is a revenue generating program, and it's relatively, uh, in terms of other athletic spaces, in, inexpensive to build in, in some senses. Um, and it's it, it could also be expanded. Uh, it, this is an opportunity to phase it if there's to start at one court and then expand it to, you know, like to two or three or up to four. I think that depends a lot on, on the building site, the available land, uh, and then, you know, 
designing it in a smart way that um, the uh, building base spacing could be expanded or built adjacent um, with a connection in, in some way. Um, but this just gives you a sense of of the type of uh, of the comparison be between those uh, those kind of three scales that we could look at. Obviously, three is an option as well. Um, with you know, kind of keeping the storage and uh, storage may increase, but the AV offices first aid would probably be a, a, a similar size for all of them. Um, so at the small size, uh, I mean, it's there's a 90 yard, um, 19 laps a mile walking track suspended above, um, and you know one playing surface, which could also be ser uh, uh, serve the um, uh, volleyball as well, if, that, if that's a program we'd, we'd like to include. Keith, I've been in a lot of gyms that have that overhanging track in my life, and you can't shoot a three pointer from the corner. <laughs> and, and it's you can't. really you can't shoot a three pointer. See the three point arc on the basketball yeah. court. I mean, our gym is like the yeah. middle school gym is like that. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, there's a half dozen of them in in Cumberland County that are like that. Yeah. If you have a middle school basketball game or a competitive basketball game where they're keeping score, you literally the overhang of the track Too much. is in the arc of the shot from the corner, and it's it's I think it's just a poor design, right. like, but you see yeah. it everywhere. So it's just a it's just a space issue, I guess. Love to see it more meandering, but yeah, I agree. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think you're both hitting it on the head in terms of the trade-offs uh, when we talk about the different size of these spaces. That as we go on the small end, certainly the upfront cost is lowest. The revenue potential is probably lowest as well. And then there are other trade-offs just in terms of how the space is used. Yeah, I mean, I I'd like to not do that if we could avoid it somehow with a more meandering track or however we can make it work with the rest of the spaces we have available to us. But it's, even on paper, it just looks silly to me. I don't know yeah, and I've seen them where they've done mm -hmm. meandering tracks or even if it's an oval track, they've left an extra square footage on the surface. So the courts are all inside of, mm -hmm. it's not overhanging the game court. Right. So you can still, you can still do every activity without obstruction. It's just more square footage that you can mm -hmm. do or not do. Right. So. Yeah. Has, has anybody ever seen a uh, uh, indoor four court facility? Colby. Yeah, most of them. The most of them in in unless you're going to in this sense, and unless we're talking about we're going to market to a lot of tournaments, four is a lot. Mm -hmm. Four is a lot. You you know what I mean. But it gives you the most flexibilities to run similar activities at the same time. Most most community centers that I've seen in New England are probably two. two. Yeah. It's just it's, it's it's a budgetary thing, right? Unless you're you're going to run basketball tournaments and have that's a driving force, then then four yeah. is a lot. There know? there are places around here that can accommodate four games at the same time, whether it's two volleyball games or two basketball games. Or yes, I've never I've been in a, hundreds of yeah. gyms in my life, and yeah. I've never seen four. Yeah, I've seen. Lots that are yeah. two. Yeah, you uh, see it more in a college field house than yeah. than a community exactly. center. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yep. And two, a lot of the facilities in Maine, I should say, besides Colby and some of these, they're pretty old designs. Mm -hmm. And so I would love to go back and see their initial revenue projections. Is it you know is that kind of built into what the market we're in now with youth sports and adult sports and competitive? The rental market is just obnoxious almost compared to what it was 20, 30 years ago when my kids were even going. And so it, it's, again, I think it's going to come down to cost to build, uh, how it affects what the building looks like and feels like, but, you know, people, you know, hundreds and hundreds, and then what's the revenue projection and do all three things. What is what you want? Well, I, I agree. I'm leaning more towards two or three and yeah. probably not four, but I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm just curious where where that exists, and if you say that Colby has the college level, has, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And I guarantee you, when you go to the tours and ask questions, every one of those people would have, would kill for another court. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> just because of what they turn away, as far as yeah, you know, or trying to make or trying to please people with what activities are trying to happen. And it's mostly empty square footage. I guess you know. Yeah. It's a big, a big open space. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, true. Yeah, but a lot of choice there.
Okay, so it it's we can look at you know what the a, a, a more a, a economic use of the floor plate with uh, the no overhanging and see what that does with the uh, with the um, you know the the off uh, out of bounds lines. Um, you know we were when you're designing with when we're looking at these spaces that are on the in a vacuum uh you know we're we're not sure whether it's a two story or a one story building really uh i mean we're assuming it's a two story where because we have the uh the suspended uh track above but um this is one case where you know some inventiveness with the uh, meandering track knowing better where you know the type of site's going to land on and and how much space is available on the on the second floor is one place where you know we we can explore that as an option in a more kind of tangible way um but that that uh type of track has you know come up already in our discussion and that that does seem like a more appealing way to to spend your time running in in maine in winter than just going around in circles <laughs> so it sounds like that the uh, two starting as a you know at least initially two quarts as a baseline um does is is are we tabling the idea of future phases is that something that we should look at in terms of the revenue generation or or uh and site opportunities i mean i would assume one end of the gym could easily be an outside wall I mean, anything can be expanded, right? I'm just depending on how how yep. how how, how, uh, you, how much parking you lose or how much you know if you're up against a wetland or whatever, like the siding of the building. And we're not at that point, but I guess I would think that the building wall on the so on the left hand side, while these diagrams would would somehow maybe be situated on the site where you could potentially expand in that direction. I I don't see any reason to not do that. Or not have that be a, a, a consideration. I think at least a consideration for future. Again, who knows where where you know kind of how this whole process is going to ultimately shake up or win. So I think any foresight to something like that, Keith, makes sense. And to your point, most of my gym in West Castle had the outside retaining wall designed to put another gym on, um, but then they decided to cut cost and drove the pile right down the middle of the road on the ground. So that was never happening. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So as we as we start to uh, look at how this lands uh, or uh, evaluate sites or site plan at some point, you know, an understanding that that may be something to consider, we'll we'll include that as as some some forethought on that. And I think so at least two. I think we're hearing two. Yeah, yeah. two two is the baseline. Yeah. Dennis was here; he'd say six, but good thing he's not. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. And then looking at at some options here, you know, Darren's favorite size is the eight lane, twenty five meter. Uh, there's a you know there's a, also a strong precedent for uh, six lanes. Uh, just some information we got recently from the uh, so Todd remind me who the email was, was from. Uh, the gaze, yeah, the AD of the high school. Yeah, yeah. the AD. Um, you know. So definitely minimum of six lanes, you know, eight eight preferred was what they're saying. I think a lot of the other things we 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 tick a lot of boxes that what they're suggesting in here. You know, one one thing we're not showing in these would be um like if, if we look here, the uh a a um a zero entry, a, a ramp that was integrated into one of the lanes that would make it a little bit wider versus uh, a, a chair that could descend into it. This would be kind of a, on on the small side here. Are the oops, I, I think the label go here's the rinse shower. So these are the rinse showers that we were talking about a moment ago, uh, shown on uh, off the pool deck uh, for the eight lane. Um, here is you know an approximation of uh, about thousand square feet of of spectator seating. Um, this could also be. Uh, located remotely again if this is a uh, a two-story building this could be maybe like on a mezzanine uh, not on the on the pool deck or it could be something that's much more uh you know a lot of times i think spectator seating kind of also gets integrated a little bit to you know waiting teams if there's a swim meet etc so there's there might be an argument for having that uh, accessible from the pool deck uh or you know and options uh, they could be really minimized to just um just some bleacher seating on the side or a single bleacher um Keith, can uh, I get some clarification from the board? I, and, I, and I just and Liz brought this up at a couple meetings ago. Um, I'd love your feedback to give them some direction. But 
my personal preference is I do not like the pool lifts. You know, no. as far as putting people in the pool, you know, the chair, mm -hmm. it's to be inclusive and to be accessible. I want to be able to do it myself. If I was in a wheelchair, I'd want to be able to roll myself in, mm -hmm. roll myself out versus have to wave somebody over, put me in a lift, drop me in the water. You know, so I think I mm -hmm. think I was trying to refer to some of the comments you made at mm -hmm. one of our first meetings. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know how you feel. I When we start talking about getting into the pool, I would love to see some sort of, you know, you know, notch off on the pool, Keith, that people could ramp themselves into the water mm -hmm. or have some sort of assistance if they choose to do it. But it's not a spectacle, if you will, about getting somebody in the chair and lowering them and having to stop operation. It's just it's just a nicer feel for somebody. into the lap pool. Yeah, they usually do it in both. So like when they get to the the rec pool, you'll see a zero. A zero right, I was action. thinking that I was thinking it would be on the rec pool where that opportunity would be, but yeah. not on the lap pool. Yeah, but, but you'll see them and you'll see them in, in lap pools off to the side. Cape Elizabeth has a little cutout where their ramp is on the side, so it's kind of on lane. Is that one or six on that side? One, I think. One. Yeah. So usually they make a little notch off where you can come down and get yourself into the water because sometimes they'll do the water aerobics class in the lap pool. You know, mm -hmm. depending on what the pool design is mm -hmm. and what the temperature is, and so. Um, I just, again, decisions for you to make, but I'm not sure if we want to give him guidance or not, but that's just a different feel to your point of what you were saying. Before. Yeah, there we, go. we got it. Done. Yeah, uh, yeah you, uh, a lot of times they, they yeah. will, they'll bump the, the, the edge uh, lanes, like a one and eight, usually they're a little wider, it's, um, and one they'll make it extra wide, and sometimes it actually goes the entire length, it's just like an extra wide lane that's like one way, or or it becomes like, a, like Tal was saying, a, a notch out. Um, to get down, and it also depends on how deep the pool is uh, for what competition. You know how far that 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 um that yeah. ramp needs to go. What we frequently see, especially in the twenty-five um, meter long pools, is the the ramp plus a stair. That um, the the length works out that you can get both, and not only is it more equitable for those who need to use the ramp. The stairs are also just a lot more comfortable for so many more people to get into the lap pool as opposed to a ladder or just diving in. And that's for all age groups. It's for yeah. kids. It's for seniors. It's for people who have different mobilities. Yeah. Um, it, it's a great feature. I was actually talking to um, our recreation uh, manager yesterday about the chair at lift because we have one. Uh, and the ramp is definitely better. Uh, there are instances where the chair is a necessary thing, but okay. I think overall for a community center, you know, the ramp to your point is is something that is, can be done on your own. The chair, <laughs> the chair thing breaks a lot. Um, it's <laughs> at least ours does. Um, and the one at uh, the therapy pool I go to, they just had to have that replaced. Um, so. I don't know how great you, they are to begin with, and it's hard to do by yourself. But are you saying we should have one? Is no, that... should not have. Oh, okay. No. Is I that don't... something we can add later if we find a need for it? Well, with those, and again, these guys can talk yeah. about design, but usually yeah. that's a cement tube that's sunk into the oh, base okay. of the pool deck so you can hold poundage. Yeah. So it's a, you might be able to put the tube in the ground and just have it capped. And so then the future, yeah. you want to buy it mm -hmm. and do it. So that's definitely a forethought if you. That's the way my pool was. We had the chair and we never put it in unless somebody for some reason couldn't mm -hmm. go because we had the zero entry so they could roll in. I don't think they have a chair lift at Cape Elizabeth, do they? I don't know. I they don't may know. just have a hole in the floor. They may have just, because literally it's just a- I'll look a the next time I go. <laughs> we have both yeah. at Piper Shores in our pool. And uh, the, the chair, people are afraid of it. You know, to be in that chair and then lifted and moved, and you're really, you know, the, the ramp is. Yeah, you, you, know, you don't have any control of yeah. it. You're trusting Patrick yeah. and I to lower you down. Yeah, the ramp, I think, is more important than anything. I have seen, you guys have probably seen these two, maybe where there's actually an elevator in the mm -hmm. water where you can get a, go down. Um, but I think you still would need a ramp because just. You know, all sorts of people can use a ramp, you know, young, older, wheelchair, you know, I would. Well, the aqua therapy is balanced. They got rails. Yeah, you have the rails. Pull yourself out of a step or you're, a ladder. Yeah, just... they're more, you know, there's more autonomy or the person you're with is just wheeling you down, not having to kind of transfer someone into a, a chair. 
Um, I could just think of my dad. I would not have wanted to transfer him into a chair and like swing him around and and then what? You know, I'd way rather wheel him down. We would always recommend a, a solution that doesn't involve extra staff and doesn't involve machinery that's going to break. Yeah. And that's the ramp solution more than any others. And you'll yeah. you'll be required to do it as part of ADA law regardless. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I've noticed you've been saying 25 meter, but the slide says 25 yards. Is it is it 25 yards? I think that the high school, like, well, the competition pools are in yards, aren't they? Yeah, I'm sorry. I must have misspoke. Yeah, it's it, they're both eight. They're short course, 25 yards, if yards. I misspoke. Yeah. So, yeah. I probably said meters, but I meant to say yards. One of the things that Darren did mention was 25 yard by 25 meter. You get a little extra room on the turns, but most commonly it's eight by 25. Okay. Um, I think the feedback we got from from the competition people, as far as schools go, they want it needs to be eight lanes. Like to hold to host a competition, yeah. it needs to be eight lanes. Yeah, it makes a better event. Yeah. Okay. So, at least as a starting point, use the eight eight lane similar layout here plus the zero entry uh, ramp and stairs as would be two changes to this. I like that. Probably yeah. Okay. And again, that gives you a place to make adjustments if you need them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if you need to bring it down, you know what I mean, as a choice, then you have, again, revenue, but also construction savings there if you go down to six, but there's cause and effect. So those are choices that you'll make down the road. Yeah. Okay. The 25 yards versus meters, though, that I'm surprised that, 20, that yards is preferred. I would think for competition, that would be meters. I think all the high school pools, like they're meter, I mean, yard pools, aren't they? That's what the, well, they, the, yeah, the, the, the if they are, they are it's not meters. Well, but that doesn't mean they're preferred. Um, no, that's what the competitions are. Is it in yards? Is, yeah. is it in yards? That's yeah, that's so yards. Yeah. Yeah. Is he it, did say with a float deck to yeah, be Mike, able to modify. Just so they all know, because I didn't share Mike's email with everybody. Mike was talking about a, a preference in, yeah. a, in, in an unlimited budget would be a 50 yard pool, which is not a large size pool. One mm -hmm. state, and that's where you get. The float deck and the ramp and the one lanes. You're talking Olympic swimming facility. What we're we talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but his his other comment was six, preferably eight lanes, would be able to hold any size competition in high school for Maine states. Like states and eight lanes, that sort of stuff. So it wouldn't restrict them from holding any of the level meets that their kids presently attend. Which the MPA play, pays a good amount of money for those competitions. I was just going to say, right? Oh, yeah, there's definitely, yeah. yeah. And even with you hosting new swim meets, I mean, there's, again, the more kids you have swimming at one time, the, the, the more you get paid per swimmer. So, yeah. Um, Are there initial reactions to the spectator seating in terms of uh, either at, at the deck or remote or uh, at all? I mean, it definitely seems like, you know, MPA events would. Uh, you know, necessitate the spectators for uh for the events. Yeah, I mean, I think they may need to come back on that one because again, they're going to see three different styles of of on uh, excuse me spectator seating. We go on our tour, and you know, you'll be able to see the cause and effects. I know in Wiscasset, yeah. my seating is on the floor was on the floor, and my facilities manager drove crazy because everybody, every parent had to take their shoe off or they got the pool deck. Right. You're sitting on lane one and you're touching every swimmer that goes by you. You know, so depending on how the pool's laid out, there's some mechanical charges there. The others two have elevated, uh, and one in, in the booth bay one is actually elevated, and the bleachers fold up and they use that space for other activities. So you'll see three different scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I kind of need to be conceptualize it in a 3D fashion, what the rest of the building is going to look like. It could be kind of like behind glass on another level, you know, the second floor. Yeah, I think it goes into the design of the space. Yeah. One is over locker rooms. It's a raised one. And the yeah. other is, uh, um, it's really sunk back. It's, it's really tough. You can't see lane one. Is this number at the bottom, 930, it looks like, is that how many you think many that's people. area seats? Is that the square? Oh footage? no, that's square footage. You know, sorry, that would be square a helpful footage. metric. Okay. Sorry, sorry. we can add that in the future. Feet, especially because it is a thousand square feet. But oh, okay. Yeah. To round numbers. Yep. Okay. Thanks. 
Okay. And then, you know, th there's tremendous flexibility in terms of the secondary pool in terms of, you know, this is obviously not, this is suggestive of what the pool could look like. You know, there's there's portions where there's stairs, you know, a large zero entry area, um, you know, some suggested of an area where there can be uh, a, a rope, you know, it, water aerobics or aqua therapy uh, areas to to swim around and paddle around, et cetera. Um, you know, these, this is the, this is at 6,900, this is kind of on the on the large side. Uh, I mean, I mean, it can, it can only go up, but I mean, it can, it can go up, but but they also can can go down. This is a uh, kind of uh, on the large side of the average that uh, I believe Darren uh, suggested, and, and what we're also seeing from from Marco Weston and Samson. Um, I, can I ask a question about this? I, I mean, that's cool that it's. A different shape but is is it more expensive to build a pool like that versus to just have a square pool does is there an advantage to having it be that odd shape that seems to me like that would be a lot more expensive to build i think there's additional costs as it gets more complicated but there's a baseline cost of building a second pool that um, it will be there regardless. So I'd say there's a, a marginal cost increase, but the majority of the cost is just in the idea of having a second pool altogether. It, is you're that doubling something up. you can factor out for us so we can have two different cost estimates? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and, you know, the, we can see the, the kind of swing between a deluxe uh, shape pool versus a more straightforward pool. Uh, as a kind of cost alternate in there. I think it also will, in addition to the first cost, we would compare it to the revenue potential of it as well. That's what I was just thinking about. I mean, I guess there's probably a fine line between kind of a tiny little pool that I bring my kids to versus, you know, something like what's up on the right. I would probably prioritize my membership. You know, like if I could take my kids to that, I would definitely prioritize my family membership and my family budget. Maybe not so much for the left one. I don't know. Um, when you see my Wiscasset pool, it's more like the one on the left. I mean, that's mm -hmm. going to slide, big slide and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's oh, that's a slide. The one the back, that back spiral, spiral those stairs. Okay. Oh, that's, that's a California, that's a Colorado. Um, that's dangerous. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's spiral stairs going to an outside slide. That's, that's oh. pretty, yeah, that's, <laughs> oh. but, you know, to the, to the one on the right, just so everybody can kind of, when we go and we talk about it, because we won't see anything like this. Mm. And Darren kind of touched on a little bit is that not all that is functioning at the same side. You know what I mean? And when you mm -hmm. think about, you know, that pool on the upper right, you can see three lap lanes or is it two? I can't see that far. Um, two lap lanes, two. you know, where three, yeah. where when you're having a high school practice at five o'clock, there's still an opportunity to lap swim or hold an aerobics class because you've got a consistent yeah. pool deck. Usually those are mm -hmm. three to four feet and it's just a literal either lap swim or it's a warm body, mm -hmm. you know, something with that lazy river that's usually has a little bit of current in there. So you have water aerobics class, you have arthritis classes mm -hmm. that there's resistance and then forget the birthday party rental piece because that's you know, they're floating, they're moving around versus something that's a stagnant water that sprays. Again, I'm only explaining what they do and how they interact versus, you know, we haven't mm -hmm. talked cost or any of that sort of stuff. But that's why you have two different kind of styles. One is more interactive and the other one is is more static. And what I'd like to see is the cost versus the revenue projection yeah, of each mm -hmm. one because, I you know, I get it that, you know, that that's a nice place to bring your family, but if you're only bringing your family for a half a day on Saturday, and I don't know if the cost is going to outweigh the benefit of that, and I think that's important for us to consider. Yeah, absolutely. You'll get it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's inter interesting that we're not going to see anything like that. There's not. So... You have to go down yeah. south. You have to go mass. They're starting to build these because again, they're mm -hmm. the revenue drivers. Right, right. And, and not just in the day passes, but in membership. Well, right, yeah. 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 
Cool. And then something, something that, you know, actually like it's that. shown to some degree, you know, in here. And then also, I think this this um, portion right here, if you're seeing my cursor, um, yeah. it is a, an opportunity to do like a splash pad. And this is, you know, something that this could actually happen outdoors as well, uh, you know, in a, you know, adjacent to the pools uh, and using also using the locker rooms, et cetera. Uh, it's a, a different way to conduct it. But, you know, uh, you know, really no standing water. Uh, for little kids just for socializing to water uh, and and on hot days, et cetera. So this is an opportunity to either have it indoor or, out, or outdoor uh, if there's room on, on the pool deck or if it seems to be a, a priority. You know, it's primarily, uh, primarily spraying and dumping equipment uh, and, and large area drains. Pete, Bill had a question, sorry, Bill. Oh, if, I'm sorry, Bill. If, no, no, if, if nobody in the area has built anything like what the picture is showing, would that mean that we would likely draw uh, interest from people who live out of town to be to uh, buy memberships? Oh, absolutely. I would. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's why, like, again, my reference in Wisconsin, we had a lot of outside community partners with other municipalities as well as um, renters because there's no other pool that does it. So, you know, there's... Um, so yeah, there, there's definitely, and again, but it depends on how busy you want your pool to be too. Right. Yeah. You know, what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. True. So choices. Thanks, Keith. So similar for the the gym, uh, and this may be difficult to answer now, but you know, so oh, we talked about the uh, eight lane with the. Um, with spectator seeing is a little bit of a, a a TBD where the configuration, the size, we're going to find out more when we visit the sites, but the uh, additional ramp plus stairs for the eight lane short course, 25 uh, yard pool. Um, any sense about the other pools or that also seems like seeing what's available at, at Booth Bay and, and some of the other um, otherwise in the area seems probably pretty important to gather a little more information. I think it's important, but I think to to um, Glenn's conversation, I think it's also uh, on that that next step is what's that revenue look like versus cost yeah. of building and offsetting mm -hmm. and how those correlate. So, um, well, leaving it at that is smaller or larger or just that for the secondary pool. I mean, we really don't know. We I, I, yeah, I'd have to leave that into like Weston and Sampton what they're you know. They they can tell you what the projected revenue and that sort of stuff. We need, and it also affects your membership structure, what we can charge too. So yeah, um, yeah, and, I, and also, I guess you probably have some flexibility. I know what your preferences are about using one set of filtration and yeah, all that stuff for yeah. for one pool, and then a separate second set of filtration for the second pool, so that if you do have a an event, one yeah. you can still run the other. Um, and I know we talked about different temperatures and things like yeah. that. I would assume that there's some economies to scale as far as the heating plant and all that stuff goes as well. Yeah. yeah every lane you take away, you, you know, you say kilowatt heating. So those are again operational costs, not just what to build, but operational costs. And then what's that revenue offset? That's mm -hmm. that's that's like step two down the road. Yeah. yeah. And we can check with the um, the pool managers when we go on that day. I'm assuming we're all going to say, please get the spectators off my pool deck um, <laughs> and parents. But you can have those conversations when we go on the night. Yeah. Great. So looking at uh, typical meeting room sizes, a couple options, You know, a medium, which would be about, let's say, uh, uh, Eight to twelve, depending on on table, two hundred fifty square feet versus a, a kind of a smaller huddle room, which could do double duty uh, and be booked more for uh, you, know, you know obviously smaller meetings, but um, more like one on one consultations seems like a more appropriate size and wouldn't be necessarily uh, occupying the whole whole meeting room. Um, again, this is kind of addressing the HOA meeting community groups. Uh, a similar size is kind of what we're using for a model for the uh, community services uh, uh, meeting rooms in within their spaces. Um, you guys manage that this type of stuff, like reserving rooms in different buildings and stuff. Our staff is all 
the whole campus. What's the, do you have any data on what the demand is for four person versus 10 to 12 people? Um, I don't know if they've, they've got the data to drill down. They could get a number of requests and activities. Um, and then a lot of times, depending on what people are charging, I don't know if they have any sort of data. The school took over scheduling indoors this year, so we could reach out to them to see what they're getting for indoor scheduling. Um, I don't know if there's any data of how many weren't filled. If they, if the school, or, and I can check with Brandy on our side, is there requests that weren't filled? Here's how many actually happened, and what type, and in what area, we could figure that out. But how many weren't filled? Or requested because of you know, can't get into school or couldn't get in our space because of staffing. I don't think we have that depth of data. Some places keep that, but I don't think we do. And are, are these meeting rooms that will charge a fee to rent? I think it all depends on where they are and what the what the what the budget structure is. A lot of a lot of spaces in town, um, and I think it's a decision you'd have to make. Don't charge it. They don't charge to use town hall. We don't charge to use the hub if our staff is there. But if our staff's not there for a meeting, then we charge. And so I think there's this total choice mm. there depending on where what level they are in the building. Mm. This seems like to me is the biggest area where we can, if we need to skinny down our budget, we can make this a something we add on later. Yeah. If that can be part of your construction um proposal, because um it I mean it seems like the easiest thing to cut without cutting the things that people want the community center for. We'll have to have a little bit of it because community services headquarters is going to be there also and yeah. they will need some yeah. meeting yeah. space for staff meetings and things like that. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen a full portfolio could you also know, be as rented. far as yeah. what, you know, what's there. But yeah, I think anything can be chopped down. Am I right in saying, just for my own and everybody else's, like four wall space is the cheapest thing to build? Yes, I think the cost per square foot of these rooms tends to be relatively high because they are smaller and they are more intensive in terms of HVAC, electrical, there's going to be an AV package associated with them. Uh, so as a cost per square foot, they tend to be um, on the high end. But again, they're small. They're only a couple hundred square feet. We're talking about two of these in the building um, as the initial suggestion. So when in the grand scheme of things, the gym that's 14,000, 15,000 square feet in that area, the pool, depending on how many we have, those are going to be the big budget items. And then these smaller items will, they cost a lot per square foot, but they're going to be dwarfed by those big elephants in the building. Thank you. And these are community gathering places. Uh, so, I mean, this is what gives the, the word community center meaning. Uh, otherwise, it's just a rec center uh, for you know swimming, basketball, mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. So, uh, well, if you, you want the library, you must have requests for because you have similar. You have a couple of meeting rooms that are about that size. Absolutely, and yeah. they're used all the time. All the time. In fact, uh, an important aspect of wanting to expand was uh, we're filled filled all the time with our our community space all the time hmm. yeah we get requests for a lot of after our meetings seven o'clock plus for groups people get out of work they want to we i know now we have to say no because our staff is not there till nine o'clock at night in our building. whereas this would be staffed those hours already anyway most if you are using your traditional model you're probably open till nine or ten o'clock at night mm -hmm. for new staff but you're still open yeah. i think also to bill's point these are the type of spaces that also attract different age groups to use the building at the same time. There might be a homeowners association meeting or a presentation that happens in one of these meeting rooms or in the multi-purpose room. And then the kids, the teens, they can tag along and they'll have other activities in the building that they can do. Um, and it's all in one place in a secure facility and just you know, kind of broadens the appeal uh, of the building to the community. Okay, great. Be mindful of the time. I think we have just a couple slides left since uh, 818. Um, look at the multi-purpose room. This should look, you know, similar in, in some senses. Uh, we we modeled it to some degree off of 
uh, similar proposals in the town. Um, you know, we're we're showing some options here. So at a at the left hand side, I think they're showing uh, you know tables at thirty six people, and then a uh, hundred eighty two if you if for if you want to divide into one third two third. You know, uh, the entire uh, space opened up in the kind of lecture format would be you know over three hundred sight lines might be a little bit of a challenge and and AV. And then you could also imagine, you know, an, another version would be uh, your banquet tables if you want to rent this out for a wedding or, or you know, gala or a big a big event, something like that. Um, so this this is a a pretty uh, fair size, you know, a, a th about a thousand square feet for for each subdivided room. Um, and I think each one, not not shown in this, but would have you know some limited uh, casework um, and probably at least the sink in each one, so that they could they could you could do uh, you know like catering or, or coffee, et cetera, for, for each space. Um, and then, you know, storage, 200 square feet of storage for uh, for the chairs and tables um, as they're broken down um, to be put back up. And then is this is kind of a, a sweet spot size for a community of 20, 25,000 in your estimation? Yeah, we, we think this is a good size. Um, and it it's just it's as Keith was explaining, it's big enough to also be able to subdivide and have different uh, separate activities happening at the same time, which is important. I don't think you're going to have a lot of uh, demand for the full room all at once, um, but it's an important component to have, especially in terms of what we heard about the other spaces that are available in the town um, and the the school having an auditorium, but the scheduling conflicts around that and so on. This will be a really important space. But I think, you know, that flexibility is key. That's both the dividers and as Keith was just mentioning, the storage is really key to be able to make that space functional to set up and, and take out different furniture setups to make it um, as multifunctional as possible. I also have that I'll share with you guys when we did this a couple of years ago. Um, I have it here, um, if I throw it on my phone, but I have all the town facilities and the square footage of each one, so you can kind of kind of visualize what that looks like. So when they're talking, this room is um, three thousand square feet. Um, if you've been in the middle school cafeteria, maybe the middle mm -hmm. school cafeteria, that's thirty five hundred square feet. Well, that's not that big. No, that's what that's what I'm saying. When you say square feet, it, it's it's. It's an illusion once you start filling it up there. So that's what that. I don't feel like you could fit three hundred people in that room. In chairs, you could. That's wow. why that's stacked in chairs. And you put tables, it takes away I think a third. I forget what the calculation, but you add a table, it takes away a third of your capacity or two thirds of your capacity. I you know, the middle school, not Wentworth. Middle school cafeteria is uh, the Wentworth cafeteria is seventy one seventy one hundred yeah, square feet. So just for just for you know when you again when we go towards, but I'll get you that list too, so you can kind of okay, sorry. okay, okay, great. <laughs> and then just to give a sense of the size, uh, you know, some of the feedback we heard before was, uh, you know, as opposed to looking at a bunch of different spaces for either you know gaming or seniors and and teens. You know, a lot. Some of this is is TBD. It depends on the location uh, and and certainly the the performer of the building but you know looking at a larger that uh space that's got the that's that's uh appointed and furnished for uh, a, a multi-generational usage uh seemed like the the direction that the the committee would like to go so this is you know about 1500 square feet uh, uh space with you know that could be subdivided um not with any partitions or anything, but certainly program different portions for you know a a, a, a gaming or or a television watching area versus you know gaming tables, uh, pool table, ping pong, et cetera, air hockey. Um, yeah, so fifteen hundred. Uh, so just for conversation, chambers A and B is. 1600 square feet. That's 1550. This, this room is about 1500 square feet, just counting ceiling tiles. Yeah. Probably a little smaller. A little, little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah. So I don't think it would die. Yeah, it's probably a little smaller, but pretty. Roughly the size of this room. Okay. Yeah. And, and 
again, you can you can give us some idea about how maybe this is an add-on later if it's something that because it to me is not a priority. Um, and I'm looking at this old report we had from what three years ago, where similar communities, size communities, um, it looks like um, the average percentage of people who are going to use this facility is going to be about 10% of our population. If that's 2,000 people, I, I struggle to see how we are even have a population base that's big enough to need this big of a, a all these meeting facilities in addition to what we're, you know, the core that we're building the um, facility for is the pool and all of the activities. So um, I, I'm, I just think we need to, to think about this being, or at least plan for it to be an add-on if we have to cut the budget because it is not something that has been identified as a priority in any of the surveys that we've done. But there's senior meeting spaces and, and teen spaces, and we haven't separated them out as separate spaces in this design. This is kind of a compromise of, you know, certain times of the day it might be used for seniors when the schools are in session and other times of the day it might be used for, you know, after school blow off steam for the, for the teens in town. So I, I think as a placeholder for maybe accomplishing a couple of different goals, because we don't really have we don't have a senior center in town. And I think that a community center to get the support of the seniors in town, I think would have to have some type of, and I don't know, what do we, it's not what we call active, active adults, adults, active adults, sorry, <laughs> an active adults component to the, to the project, I think would, would gather some support. Um, yeah. And I think that's what we need to do is get their input on that because those are also the people who are concerned about their taxes going up. Yeah. And besides, yeah, right. Part of the charrette is going to have that. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's why that right? two to three thirty really yeah. focusing on that group, and then again, it's open to anybody at the evening, and then any feedback once this gets out there will. And I know yeah. we talked about this years ago, probably when we were thinking about actually putting a senior center on the ballot. Did we actually put a senior center on the ballot? I thought we did. I think we did, and it failed, right? I thought we did it failed. Days, I think it was. No, no. This no, it been, was like this ten been, years ago, maybe. Yeah, I was going to say ten or. Yeah. 10, 15 years ago. But, oh, really? But I, the idea of it being a shared space with teenagers or other generational groups but yeah, was, it was like 10 years very ago, much a negative. But I think that, the conversation with fail was because people just didn't want that expense just for seniors. They wanted a multi purpose space that more yeah. people could use. Yeah. So, again, depending on your, your angle. Yeah. 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 It'd be interesting to hear the feedback from the Schwartz. You know, mm -hmm. Depending on the programming, you know, some some of the uh, the multi-purpose spaces can be subdivided, and and it just depends how it flows through the day. You know, like if if you're looking for spaces for activities like the gingerbread uh, making, you know, that that could happen in one lobe of the multi-purpose room. You know, again, you know, it's, it 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 has a different sensibility when something's not you know built in or feel like a dedicated space, but uh, there's certainly um, you know, depending on the, the programming, the time of day, wouldn't be without a space. Obviously, if there's uh, if there were not a, a dedicated uh, multi generational game room. Yeah, and I think that the one thing that you know when they did that report, I'm trying to remember back, was again this was in the down, and so there wasn't any school facilities close enough to the access. And Dennis, I think, said it well last meeting regarding if this is anywhere near walkable for these kids. Once we get to that point, you're going to see a lot of pressure come off the library. And absolutely operationally, I think you're going to need space like that, which you can charge in the membership with a fee as part of that fee to get in there and use. Um, so I think it needs to be a consideration whether it lands in there, that'll be a choice down yeah. the road. But operationally, there's nothing worse than having a, a non space where you can't send wonderful teenagers to. When they're not in the gym or in a space or you know as yeah. far as that sort of stuff so um i'd be interested to see if it gets support the threat and if it doesn't then yeah it's a, it's an add-on in the future or a consideration so yeah location is key it's only going to depend on where it is i think that's i think when you get looking at these spaces i think yeah. 
you know, if we get from that, that far down the road to say, okay, here's a potential couple spaces, and same thing we do with the school, what will fit and what you can do in there will mm -hmm. drive a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Or if it's on a shared site with a fourth elementary school, that's the direction of this, you know what I mean? Right. Or it's a shared mm -hmm. building, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that'll that'll shake out as you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then yeah. at you. some point we're going to have to decide about whether we're recommending six lanes or eight. Can we get information on what facilities offer eight and what facilities offer six as a sort of a basis of comparison? Yeah, Pete, we, is that available? We can take a look and see around um, Cape is six. I think South Portland's eight. South Portland is eight. Wisconsin's West, six. Westbrook is, is Westbrook's eight, I think. West, yeah, Westbrook is eight. Um, so yeah, so we can get you a local kind of yeah. And again, six or eight, and I, and I keep saying it's just for us to be thinking about it, is six or eight depends on what else is found. You know, if you were just to go with a lap pool, then I would be saying, well, we can't do anything less than eight. If mm -hmm. you were thinking of a second pool, then you might get away with six if you've got. You've got other lanes in your other other pool. It, it depends on what it's paired with, and then what you're ultimately trying to accomplish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The aquatics director at Cape Elizabeth said, "No less than eight, and preferably ten. Right. If you were not <laughs> have a second, he said that in the basis that if you were if you weren't having a second pool. Well, he recommended that 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 was should be a priority to having a second pool, but not not because. It was serving the purpose of two pools, right. but because but it, would be his it would be the preference for for meets and everything. Plus, yeah. if you only need the six lanes for a meet, you've got two extra lanes for people who might want to lap yeah. swim while so the meet is going on. Yeah, 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 eight minimum. Yeah, but I think yeah. Bill, just for the purposes of this discussion at this point in time, we're saying eight with the stairs and the ran the zero yeah. entry ramp. Yeah, six would be better than nothing, but. <laughs> yeah. Eight would be preferred. Again, that's that's why I love having the committee. I wish everybody was here. And again, that's when we get to some of these decisions in the public because, you know, for me, I preferably as a non lap swimmer, a rec pool make would made so much more sense for my family. And yeah, my kids did swim team too. Um, but if I had to choose, I would choose rec. But as a swimmer, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you can see, and that's why it's got to have a balance and mm -hmm. kind of how it how it flows with everybody. So. All right, uh, go ahead, Keith. Great. That that's it. Yeah, you know, we we already talked about the charrette, which will be okay. Get, we started with the charrette. Perfect. Um, sites is that them too? Say that again. Yeah, I think they were skipping the sites because we were going. Yeah, right. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you engage with plan, we talked about that already. Yeah. Um, so next meeting dates, we know uh, we got some indication from the town manager through the school department that they want us to you know, maybe give them a little breathing room to figure out what they have going on. So we've got that direction. So we have canceled the uh, meetings on the 21st of December and January 4th. And we need to set a mid January date um, to reconvene. So um, we have the, the charrettes on the 7th which you're more than welcome to attend to. I can't make it that day, but any committee members welcome to attend or um, or I guess some of those events might be open to the public. I don't know. That sure, that? Certainly some of those, uh, not the in-school ones, obviously. Yeah, the, the, it's it's open to the public completely on the, but the two yeah. to three and the five to seven. It's It's been in the newsletter. Yeah. It's been, uh, Facebook pages are made, so those are pushed, getting pushed out for an event for people to know. And then we'll do email blasts to our, Townwide database that we have to say, hey, here's your opportunity, uh, and then we can pass that email along to anybody that wants to push it out. And then we, as a committee, have the field trips on the ninth. Um, yep. Where are we meeting? So we're meeting at, the, and I'll send you a separate email on this. We're you're meeting at the hub. You're leaving at seven a.m. Mm -hmm. um, and I've twisted the arm of Steve Kramer to drive you, um, <laughs> so I don't have to drive down, drive back, drive down, and drive back. Smart. So. Um, I don't know if we got our trip. He wants to go. He's interested too. So he's going to meet you drive. And then I will meet you um, probably in Brunswick, even though it's 15 minutes south of 
of Bath, our first stop. I'll meet you in Brunswick when you get off the highway. Um, that way we can talk about each destination and lead to. Yeah. Okay. That was what I was going to ask. Are, do, are we going to have like a standard list of questions that we want to ask at each place? Or, I mean, I think we should if we don't already have that. Yeah. No, I haven't created any questions. I think that that's totally, you know, not a bad idea if people have questions. Again, for me, my mindset was around getting you square footage and getting you to see mm -hmm. a busy building and what that felt like. So then you can, when you start thinking about, oh, we got to cut this or not do this kind of how those things mm -hmm. lean together. Because when you look at, for example, Bath's lobby, they've added on and it's not that big, but they've added on because it was just so crowded. Wiscasset's lobby is tiny. Booth Bay just finished a renovation in their lobby and in their meeting room area because of demand and pressure in that place. So you've got three different total setups to kind of look at um, when you go. So, um, and if you have certain questions, you can just email them to me ahead of time because then I can try to get them answered by, you know. Oh, that would be good. So if you yeah, could just yeah. send them to me and I can build them into a Google sheet and and then I can send them to the director and the facilities okay. manager and some of these have executive officers. They're not all going to be there on a Saturday. So if there's, yeah, uh, right. so yeah. I can, they're all willing to help. Uh, I'm just not sure which one of us is going to be there. to. Uh, and I think it okay. would help if our committee gave some thought to what do we want to learn what common questions are there? Yeah, and that's and what I think. All yeah. submit them, whatever yeah. we think, to you. Yeah. Uh, and you can then edit and pick and choose and yeah. transmit. Yeah. Yeah, because I think once you get through the first one, you'll come up with questions you didn't think of. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And then you can ask those. And we can always go back to or think of a question that we didn't ask, but we did ask, and we can go back to the other two or three and get it answered. So you can have a mm -hmm. cumulative. And, we come up with a great suite of questions there's no reason why we can't send it to every rec center around and it not that a director or yes. facilities manager is going to answer it but a lot of rec people are willing to help each other yeah. so yeah. we've got it doesn't mean we just have to do it to these three we could send it to everybody to say okay what's your biggest challenge with x or right. y yeah. Or, Good idea. so yeah does util have something that we can cheat from is there a, a list of questions that you guys have seen formulated at all we can generate you know, they all of the questions that you've asked tonight are questions to ask at the on the site visits that you go on. You know, the the question about spectator seating, the question about our meeting rooms busy. Do you wish you had more? Do you regret having what you have? Those types of questions. Those are really the questions we want to have answers to because you know we we're kind of we're funneling down. Uh, we started our meetings with a pretty wide range of potential activities. We've whittled them down and further and further. We're getting more fine grained. And I think we, you know, we don't want to reinvent the wheel at this point. We really want to keep refining so that we get to a good solid baseline program with a series of options as we've talked about. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so then we probably should try to set a meeting. I don't know if we want to do a we do a poll or something like that. Yeah. So again, do we want to stay on Thursdays? Again, so I, for me. I head out of town on the 18th for the rest of the month. Um, so actually, that's not true. The 18th, they like the when do I get back to the like fourth? Can't can't wait until... pretty much the third when I get back the 26th. We'll cancel it until so January. Is that what you're saying? No, I just we have to if we want to do a Thursday, it would have to be the 11th for me. Oh, okay, and I can't do the 11th. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I can do any night as long as I know in advance. Yeah. Mondays are hard. So MLK is the fifteenth. Is the sixteenth an option for folks? Are you talking January? January? Yeah, January. We're in January. Yeah. Seventeenth is even better for me. Either one. Why don't I check with these guys to make sure their schedule is good, and then I'll check. I'll send a poll out to the. Other people that aren't here. Two so yeah. two let's do for the 16th or 17th. Yeah. Either yeah. those days are works for me. Okay. So those all work for the for the people sitting here tonight. So Keith, can you clarify for me? Because I didn't have it on the schedule, but are you are you hoping we get together after having a regular meeting on the seventh? Or we cancel the night meeting and just meeting back in January to discuss that we had a full meeting. We had held, I mean, it was, it was previously scheduled that there was a meeting on the seventh. I think we we're gonna touch base, but I also feel like 
it, it, you know, it's going to be a long day to talk to people. And so um, it, it, I can imagine kind of putting it together in a more polished way and, and coming back in January and, and talking about it in a more productive okay. way. Does that so make sense? No yeah, we did have a meeting on the 7th, but I, I, I couldn't make it. Okay. So I had exited off of the calendar. So people already. that can attend the charrette on that 5 to 7, that would, be the meeting. that would be the meeting time to be able to interact with people and get questions. And then let's do that, Keith, if that works for you guys. We'll try to get as many people as we can to that 5 to 7 time frame to interact with people, get install their own wishes or, or wants or concerns. Um, and then that way we get something really tangible to talk about when we meet in January versus just kind of rehashing what you, I mean, you guys are going to be cooked from what you kind of gathered over a, a period to be able to regurgitate that minutes later will probably be pretty difficult. So, And one of them was three to five too, right? Uh, two Did to three thirty and then five to seven. Okay. Yep. Two to three thirty was a different group, or is uh, so two to three thirty. We're holding a senior event, an active adults, excuse me, event that time. So we know we're going to have a bunch of people in the building. Okay. But any age demographic can come during that two to three thirty. I'm going to try well. and pop in yeah. to that because so we work for a little bit. They're both completely open to the public. We picked that two to three thirty because we have another event, so we know we'll have some people in that. So place. I'll I'll plan to come to both of those two to three thirty and five to seven. Great. I'll definitely be here five to seven. Okay. seven I'll send an invite out to the committee. I'll read. I, I, gave, I put everybody's dates that and times in that last email I sent to you guys. Mm -hmm. But I will just. Yeah, I'll, I'll just send that again. Okay. And and when we're at that event, um, is that going to have any structure to it in terms of somebody coordinating? So what that's what we're going to talk about to next get, week. Okay. So the, between my staff and and UTL, we'll coordinate the piece, and then people can help orchestrate that because they were talking about depending on the group again some people like to not talk and just go put here's my idea and put it on a wall and some people want to be able to say okay Gwen I'd love to chat with you and tell you my whole mm -hmm. world so there'll be <laughs> opportunity there'll be opportunity for chatting but again somebody that's just my wife would just want to take a sticker and put it on the wall and not talk <laughs> yeah so for those of us who are going to be there just let us know what we can do yes, to once we facilitate out, getting yeah. the information yeah Absolutely. yep Thanks. Yeah, we can once we start things too, we can identify who's on the door so we can only stick that in. Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. Yep. All right. Perfect. Before Thank you, you adjourn, can I ask to assign a little more homework, which is again, okay. talk to all your friends and neighbors, talk to fellow residents about this, uh, what's going on on the seventh, but also more importantly, uh, the types of programs that we're narrowing down. We really would love to use these weeks um, around the holidays and when we come back in January to get some additional feedback, not just your own points of view, but what you heard from your neighbors and friends and other fellow residents about what they'd want to see in the community center. That will be incredibly helpful for all of us. And if we can remember that when we're coming back on the tour, we can try to cannibalize some of that stuff while we're driving to yeah. lose that time. Okay. So, so, so our next get together is the charrette. It's the charrette. And after that, it's the ninth is the tour. The, the facility tour in December. Yeah, yeah so that's Thursday, Saturday. Yeah. And then I'll send a um, details reminder on the tour. Thanks, guys. Um, and then um, as well as some of the square footage stuff. And you're going to send me questions if you have something to ask. Yeah. That. So, very good. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Happy holidays, Thank you. everybody. Thank you, yeah. you too. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah,